In this lesson, we're going to learn about the characteristics and the typical reactions that acids and alkalis can undergo. Acids are known to have a sour taste. If you can recall, one of the acid that we have learned in the previous lesson is ethanoic acid, which is vinegar. And I'm sure most of you all would have tried vinegar before it has a sour taste. Um, acids are also non known to turn blue litmus paper red. I'm quite sure you have learned this in your lower secondary science before. And then lastly, less acids can dissolve in water to form solutions which can conduct electricity. So if you can recall the topic of chemical bonding, in order for a substance to conduct electricity, it must first contain something that's charged. And secondly, the thing that's charged must be able to move freely. So using the example of hydrochloric acid, when it dissolves in water, it, con it contains hydrogen ions and chloride ions. And um, in solution form, these ions are free to move. So that's why acids form solutions that can conduct electricity. Now these are the three common reactions of acids. Firstly, acids can react with reactive metals to form a salt and hydrogen gas. Acids can react with metal carbonates to form salt, carbon dioxide and water. And lastly, acids can react with bases to form salt and water. Now one thing, one challenge that students always have is to identify the salt that's produced in the reactions. Now, uh, good way to remember or uh, to find out the identity of the salt is to remember that salt, the salt produced contains the cation from the metal, the carbonate or the base, and the salt will contain the anion from the acid. All right. Later, as we look at specific examples for the three types of reactions, we will uh, revisit this rule. The first reaction of acids is that acids react with reactive metals to form salt and hydrogen gas. The common question is, how do I know whether a metal is reactive? Uh, for now, um, you don't have to remember. We will tell you if the metal is reactive enough to react with acids. But later on in the chapter of metals, we will learn which metals are reactive enough to react with acids and which metals are not. Now for now, all you need to remember is that there are certain acids, there are certain metals, for example, copper and silver. These two metals are not reactive enough to react with acids. So magnesium, magnesium is an example of a metal that's reactive enough to react with acids. In fact, uh, most of the metals at ending with IUM, they are reactive enough to react with acids. So in this case, when magnesium reacts with sulfuric acid, we know that one of the product is definitely hydrogen gas. And what is the other product? So the, this is where the rule comes in. The salt contains the uh, cation cons that comes from the metal. So over here, it would be magnesium. And then the salt will contain an anion that comes from the acid. So if we look at sulfuric acid, what is the anion in sulfuric acid? It is your sulfate. Alright, so now I'll illustrate the balanced chemical equation for this reaction. Magnesium is a solid. Sulfuric acid, if you can recall all acids, they are dissolved or they are dissociated in water, so the correct state symbol would be aqueous. Hydrogen is a gas. And then magnesium sulfate over here is also aqueous. Now how do we know that magnesium sulfate is aqueous? This we will learn it in the very next chapter of salts. The next reaction that we're going to look at is acid plus carbonate gives you salt carbon dioxide and water. Alright, so um, over here, unlike the 
previous reaction where only certain metals can react with acids um, over here all carbonates can react with acids so when zinc carbonate reacts with sulfuric acid um, what are the products formed we know that we have carbon dioxide we know that that is water which is accompanied by a salt so what is the identity of the salt let's apply the rule again the salt contains a cation that comes from the carbonate so if we look at the carbonate the cation over here is zinc so the salt contains zinc and then the anion comes from your acid so the anion that's found in sulfuric acid is once again your zinc sulfate all right so now again I'll illustrate the balanced chemical equation we have zinc carbonate which is a solid again how do we know that zinc carbonate is a solid we will learn it in the very next um, chapter of salts sulfuric acid is aqueous and then we have zinc sulfate which is also aqueous carbon dioxide a gas and then we have water which is a liquid the very last reaction that we're going to look at is that of an acid and a base or acid and an alkali it will simply produce salt and water now there's a special name given to this kind of reaction it's called neutralization so whenever we say a neutralization reaction has taken place it means that an acid has reacted with a base or an alkali so in this case we have a base an example of the base is copper 2 oxide reacting with nitric acid what are the products formed we know that there is water and then the salt would contain a cation from your base so it's copper 2 and it contains an anion from your acid which would be nitrate okay so how do we write a balance equation for that copper 2 oxide is a solid nitric acid is aqueous and then we have water and we have copper 2 nitrate now copper 2 nitrate has the following formula why is it like that because copper 2 contains Cu2 plus and then nitrate is NO3 minus right so when we combine the two ions together remember you need two nitrates in order for the charges to balance out so once we have written down the chemical formula for all the substances involved I hope you can spot that the equation is not balanced so in order to balance we need to balance the nitrates and then lastly the water all right I forgot the state symbol for water water should be a liquid now this is another example uh, in this example I will make use of an alkali instead of a base so hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide would produce water and it will produce sodium chloride so the chemical equation simply is this all right so the equation is already balanced now before we go on to look at alkalis it's important for you all to remember some uses of acids and alkalis sometimes it's being tested as a recall question also so sulfuric acid is frequently used as the starting material for the manufacture of fertilizers is used in your battery acids um, in car batteries hydrochloric acid is used to remove rust in certain metals phosphoric acid if you check your um, ingredients in your coke it actually contains phosphoric acid it makes the um, drink so uh, taste sour and then of course we have ethanoic acid which is a food additive 
Now we're going to look at alkalis. Same thing, we're going to look at the characteristics and then the reactions of alkalis. Alkalis have a bitter taste, right? Um, it feels soapy. And then lastly, alkalis turn red litmus paper blue. So um, if you haven't realized, alkalis are just the opposite of acids. Acids turns blue litmus paper red. So alkalis turns red litmus paper blue. There are again three common reactions that alkalis can undergo. Alkali reacts with acid to form salt and water. This one we have learned before is called neutralization. Alkalis can react with ammonium salts to form ammonia, gas, salt, and there's a typo over here and water. And lastly, alkalis can react with metal salts to form metal hydroxide and another salt. Essentially, this is a precipitation reaction. All right, we'll learn more of such reactions when we talk about qualitative analysis. So the first reaction um, where an alkali reacts with an acid, this one we have seen it previously when we were discussing acid. So we're going to jump to the second reaction which is alkali plus ammonium salts give you salt, ammonia gas and water. Alright, so over here, what exactly are ammonium salts? Ammonium salts are ionic compounds that contain the cation ammonium. Alright, so NH4 plus combined with another anion. So in this example, ammon uh, we are looking at ammonium chloride. So it's ammonium ion combined with chloride ion, um, we call it an ammonium salt. So when sodium hydroxide reacts with ammonium chloride, what are the products formed? We know that it contains ammonia gas. It produces water. Now what is the other, um, what is the salt that is formed? We can easily find out by recognizing that ammonia came from ammonium. And then water actually came from hydroxide. So what remains from the reactants would be sodium chloride. So that is the salt that is being formed. So again, I'm going to write you the balanced chemical equation. We have sodium hydroxide with ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride is also uh, soluble in water, so it's aqueous. To give you ammonia gas, water, and sodium chloride. Now the last reaction for alkalis would be um, that when an alkali reacts with a metal salt, it will actually produce the metal hydroxide and a second salt. So what exactly do we mean by that? So in this case we have sodium hydroxide which is the alkali reacting with iron to sulfate. So what is going to happen is that it's going to form iron to hydroxide and then it will form a second salt. So what is the identity of the second salt? Again, uh, we can infer, we can deduce by recognizing that iron to hydroxide came from here, iron to and then hydroxide. So the other remaining salt must be sodium sulfate. So the balanced chemical equation now is sodium hydroxide plus iron 2 sulfate to produce iron 2 hydroxide. Iron 2 hydroxide is a solid plus sodium sulfate. Alright, so um, if we look at this equation, we would realize that it's not balanced. So we need to put a 2 in front of sodium hydroxide and that would make it balanced. Now, if you take a look at the state symbols for this equation, we are mixing two solutions and it leads to the formation of a 
solid all right so when you mix two solutions and it produces a solid we give such reactions a special name we call it a precipitation reaction so once again we're going to end off by looking at the uses of alkalis uh, sodium hydroxide is commonly used to make soaps calcium hydroxide is added to soils to reduce soil acidity now why is that important is because um, plants grow well in neutral or slightly acidic soil so if uh, soil is very very acidic your plants cannot grow well so we need to add something to neutralize the acid in the soil and the thing that we usually add is calcium hydroxide now calcium hydroxide has a common name you actually see it in the lab a lot it's actually called lime water all right and um, another common place where we see lime water is the test for carbon dioxide in order to know whether a gas produces carbon dioxide we bubble it into lime water which is calcium hydroxide and if a white precipitate is formed we know that the gas is carbon dioxide and then the last uh, alkali that we're going to look at is ammonia ammonia is a starting material for making fertilizers right plants need a lot of nitrogen to grow well so um, so nitrogen containing compounds are often used as fertilizers 